today I'm visiting one of the most important habitats within a forest ecosystem, a vernal pool. Vernal pools are depressions on the landscape that are filled with standing water during certain times of the year, usually in the fall and throughout the spring. Because the standing water in vernal pools is not permanent, fish are unable to persist in these wetlands. With the absence of these aquatic predators, vernal pools offer a safe haven for amphibians to breed and to lay their eggs. Wood frogs, for example, are vernal pool breeding obligates, meaning that they only lay their eggs in vernal pools. The larvae of these amphibians metamorphose prior to the draining of standing water within vernal pools. However, if there is any absence of precipitation for a period of time, then the standing water in the pools can deplete prior to the completion of metamorphosis. This results in larvae mortality. While vernal pools might prevent the presence of fish, the high concentration of amphibians utilizing these wetlands will attract some terrestrial predators. Blanding's turtles, spotted turtles, and even snapping turtles are just a few examples of these terrestrial predators who will enter vernal pools to feed on the egg masses of breeding amphibians. Winter might seem like a desolate time of the year for most wildlife. However, it is essential for the persistence of vernal pools. This is because the amount of snowfall during winter will influence the level of standing water that will be available in the early spring. The result of melting snow filling the depressions with standing water will create these vital but temporary ecosystems. The Eastern or Red Spotted Newt is an aquatic salamander with a complex life history. While they are born in water, newts will migrate into upland terrestrial habitats as juveniles where they will remain for a few years in what is known as the Red F stage. Eventually, red Fs will migrate to another wetland where they will transform into the fully aquatic newts and will stay in that stage for the rest of their adult lives. Eastern newts are active year-round, even during the winter. During this time, hundreds, even thousands of newts are known to gather together, forming what are called newt balls. Hoping to capture this rare event, I visited a vernal pool in western Massachusetts during a mild day in late February. The following clips are some footage of newts I was able to capture during my visit. It was interesting that almost all the newts I observed were not active and instead were suspended in what appeared to be a state of brumation. Brumation is essentially hibernating for reptiles and amphibians, but those who brumate underwater are able to do so through a process called cloacal respiration. Reptiles and amphibians technically do not breathe when they are brumating underwater. They instead diffuse oxygen and carbon dioxide through their cloacas which is located just interior to their vents. Essentially, 
perps respiring through their cloacas is like us breathing through our butts. One factor that makes cloacal respiration possible is that cold water holds more dissolved oxygen than warmer water. So during the winter and early spring, the concentrations of dissolved oxygen are at their highest, which makes brumating underwater easier for reptiles and amphibians. While it was thrilling to see newts deep in their overwintering slumber, I was fortunate enough to find one who seemed unfazed by the frigid water. And a few minutes later, I spotted the same newt crawling out of the water to bask on top of a small, exposed rock. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and or subscribing.